to build the nation's might, and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Today is the 15th of March, 2013. My name is Darren Robarts, and we're here at the Warhawk Air Museum in Napa, Idaho. I'll be interviewing Claire Kilton for our Veterans History Project in partnership with the Library of Congress. The cameraman, the operator, is Don Bittler. Welcome, Claire. Thank you for being here today. Good to be here. For the record, would you please uh, state your name? Sir, my name is Claire Howard Kilton. Born uh, July 29th, 1918, in Ashland, Wisconsin. Uh, I was in the Army. Uh, I volunteered in uh, 1942 and uh, served for three years uh, with the uh, 30th Division, 117th Infantry, uh, as a first lieutenant. I, once again, sir, thank you so much for being with us. And let's just begin. Uh, you know, where you grew up, and what town, and wh what was your family like, and and what did what did you, what your mother and father do for a living, and things like that. Uh, I was born in Ashland, Wisconsin. And the reason I was born in Ashland is because my father was a sailor on Lake Superior. He. Uh, my grandfather was the captain of the Tug Ashland, working for Schrader Lumber Company in Ashland. Their job was to haul boom, booms of logs across from the Canadian shore, across Lake Superior to Ashland, to Schrader Lumber Company, which was a, a big lumber company, and then they'd unload the logs, go back across the Canada, and do the job over again. Uh, so I was w the only child born there. We, uh, my two older brothers were born in Schwing, Wisconsin. So when I was seven years old, uh, my family, we moved back to Sheboygan, Sh Wisconsin. My dad uh, went to work for the Kohler Company as an engineer. Uh, I went to school in, uh, in uh, Sheboygan, uh, Sheboygan High School. Uh, I must add that uh, my football team was one of the very few that won uh, uh, the uh, championship of the league. Uh, when I was a junior, I played right end. Um, and so then, uh, didn't want too sure what I wanted to do, so I putzed around with little jobs. But eventually, uh, I decided I wanted to be a photographer. And uh, so, uh, but in the meantime, uh, I was in college for a couple of three years, and then uh, the Army decided I should uh, join the Army. Uh, my dad worked at the courthouse, and he knew the guys on the draft board, and uh, so I knew that uh, in July uh, 42, I was to be drafted. So I uh, said, well, the deal was then, if you, drive, if you volunteered, you probably pick, a, pick and choose what you want to do in the Army, right? Wrong. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, volunteered, and uh, before I knew it, was on a train going to Austin, Texas, to join the 95th Infantry Division as Buck Private. Oh. Uh, so, made, uh, for, made PFC, made Corporal, and we're came down, and we are accepting uh, applications for uh, Officers Candidate School, Fort Payne, Georgia. And I said, well, I'll give it a shot. So I took some tests and passed. And I arrived at uh, Fort Payne, Georgia, in uh, 1942, I think it was, uh, Christmas Eve of all times to arrive someplace, right? So January 2nd, I started in the infantry school at Fort Payne. Mm -hmm. uh, went through three months of training, basically learning how to basic train, learning how to do uh, 
closer drill. They had you know, all the parts of the rifle, uh, M1, learning uh, how to train people, uh, doing everything that you had to do. And on uh, March 31st, uh, I graduated from Fort, Fort Plain, Georgia. So I called my wife and said, honey, we can get married, uh, get ready. <laughs> so I uh, went back to Wisconsin. On uh, April 5th, my wife and I were married. Uh, and then I went right back to Camp Swift to join the 96th Division uh, and uh, went uh, into training there. Uh, and eventually, uh, well, really, I got a cushy job. I was uh, assigned to be in part of the, uh, the general's uh, group and uh, just uh, did work. Uh, to, my job really was to make sure that uh, the general was safe. <laughs> I don't remember the general's name, but uh, he was a good general. and. Uh, so then uh, it, uh, we went to uh, to uh, some do some maneuvers in uh, Kasachi National Forest, and uh, from there my division went up to uh, to uh, uh, let's see, I can't think of the name of the. We went up someplace. I can't remember the name of the place where we uh, were right, but. <coughs> Uh, we did some training up there, and then uh, the uh, word came down that uh, I uh, would be going uh, into Europe. So, uh, in the meantime, right after we were married, my wife said, Honey, I want to have a baby. Uh, I want to have your child. And uh, so we took care of that. Ten days after my child, my first child, Thomas, was born, I left uh, for Europe. Uh, well, I went to the East Coast and uh, Camp Chanks in the East Coast. And uh, pretty soon I, uh, I got on a ship, uh, left for Europe. It was an interesting ship. It was a British ship. A uh, British crew, uh, a very nice ship, and uh, fortunately uh, they had an officers' mess there. Uh, it was uh, all the officers ate together, and uh, had a very nice uh, five or six course meal, compliments to the British Army. <laughs> um, uh, I remember three days I was uh, below deck. We, uh, the uh, state room we had was very nice, uh, state room for two people. However, there were nine of us in it, <laughs> triple decks. And uh, I remember we were coming back, uh, going over to England, and then we came down the, the north side and landed uh, on the Scottish coast. And uh, then finally went down to South East London and uh, went to uh, in training there in July. Uh, and we really trained then in, uh, let's see, DJ was uh, in 43? Four. Yeah. 44. 44, 44. yeah, right. Okay, so I listened 43. Landed uh, there, and we c I went into training. I was assigned then to the 30th Infantry Division, uh, and uh, we trained uh, trained our guys, and uh, spent a lot of time visiting London and uh, visiting England. They're very nice. Uh, could could I just I'm going to ask interject a question here. What? I'm going to interject a question here about your training for D-Day. Yeah. Um, obviously, there was something, um, uh, the Army was preparing for the invasion and, and all of that. So, invasion, what was, uh, so what was your training like we, during that uh, time? In those days, we, because of World War I, uh, we wore gas masks. It was basic training, 
basic uniform was gas mask. Mm -hmm. And uh, so part of our training was that uh, we'd be out in the field any place doing anything and gas, gas, gas. See how fast they put on the gas mask. And, uh, but then, uh, let's see, I uh, was assigned uh, again to the 30th Division and then uh, we landed uh, in, in Europe, in Normandy, uh, D plus 10. And uh, in Hedgerows. And uh, I remember vaguely seeing, uh, uh, well, a lot of the shot up uh, buildings and villages. And uh, same, same year in Greece was one of the little towns I saw. They showed me, and later on it was in a movie where uh, a paratrooper landed on a church steeple in Samir, and that was made in a movie later on. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I got into the fighting uh, in the hedgerows. Uh, my first, uh, I still remember seeing my first German dead soldier laying uh, next to the field, uh, next to the, laying down the crowd there. We were fighting from hedgerow to hedgerow to hedgerow. If you're familiar with hedgerows, the, the, uh, the uh, French did not have fences around their fields. They had hedgerows in a field of about maybe uh, uh, 100 square yards. And uh, so uh, about, uh, I don't know, I was there for a while fighting and uh, not uh, getting wounded or anything, but then one day I was uh, standing uh, with a sergeant next to me. We were trying to figure out where the German machine gun was firing from. And I pointed, and uh, I think I think it was right about there, right? Put my hand down, my hand felt warm. Down the gun, blood in my hand. The bullet went through up here. As the bicep came out of the tricep, didn't feel a thing. I thought, well, I go back to the aid station and put a bandaid on me, and I'll go back to join the group. We're in much company, right? I was a, at that time I was a, a, a platoon leader. Uh, well, I uh, went back to the battalion aid station. Then I went back to the regiment hospital, and. Uh, they uh, gave me some medication and uh, said, well, what's next? And they said, you're going back to England. There's too much, uh, uh, well, we can't treat you here. Everybody goes back to England who's wounded. So I uh, have a letter here that I wrote uh, from uh, from the funeral to my family when I landed in England. Okay, this, one right this one right here. Uh, <coughs> I was from written from an English hospital. I spent five days there in the English hospital. And then they said, uh, we have a a nice place you can go for a few days, a couple of weeks to spend time. There's a home, I think, of a, uh, of a former general in the, uh, who, uh, I can't think of the place where he was, but it was a very nice home, and uh, we uh, spent some time there. We had breakfast in the morning. There were about maybe a half dozen of us. Uh, all officers recovering from wounds. We spend uh, have a nice breakfast, have tea in the morning, lunch at noon, afternoon tea, cocktails at five, and dinner at seven. 
<laughs> Very nice. And then, uh, well, that ended, and I uh, don't remember exactly, but you see, I, I went, went there and, uh, in August, and uh, then uh, I think it was about September, I was assigned to uh, take what was called a package back to Europe to fight. And uh, the package I had was all black soldiers. My first experience with black people, because hmm. uh, where I was born uh, in uh, <coughs> Chamoy, Wisconsin, there were no blacks. Hmm. Uh, so this is a new experience for me. But uh, we got through it, did fine. But when we got, I got back, then I went back to join my uh, 30th Division. Uh, crossed the Rhine River, and uh, my first uh, vivid experience was the, uh, the, what was called the Battle of the Balls. When uh, the Germans, Hitler decided to make a final push to the to the uh, uh, coast, to the canal, and get back in. But at that time, uh, I remember hearing uh, they were sending buzz bombs over. And uh, you could hear them And I was in England and you could hear them landing. Fortunately, I uh, never got near one, but uh, I, visit, I heard and remembered the buzz bombs landing in, uh, in England. A uh, battle of balls, I was there. I lost half my platoon from what was called uh, trench foot, mm -hmm. frozen feet. We did not have, we had regular army boots. Uh, uh, come April about, I think it was April, we finally got snowshoes that keeps the feet warm. So that was great, but it was too late. Uh, they say I lost half my platoon with, with the trench foot. Uh, well, the war ended in Europe, and uh, one day, son of a gun, I got a letter from the War Department. You will return to the United States have 30 days delay en route, and then you will proceed to the west coast to go to Japan to fight against the Japanese. I uh, what the hell? Why me? I was the only guy in my platoon, in my company, that got a letter like that. So, well, I guess I'm special. <laughs> hell no. Fortunately, I was at the Harv in April, when the bombs were dropped, uh, the, the bombs were dropped in Japan, and that war ended. So I uh, got on a liberty ship and went back to uh, to uh, the camp that I was originally sent from in Chicago, and I was given a discharge. And I went to back to meet me, my wife in Chicago, and uh, she said, welcome home, honey. And I said, well, I'm glad I'm back. Guess what? I'm going to be a photographer. <laughs> she said, well, that's nice. I never, uh, I got interested and got some drone cameras and got interested in photography. And, uh, so I spent a year waiting to get uh, in a GI Bill, and then I went to Chicago to a photography school for one year and started my photography business in Chimoyan. And uh, so I did photography for 60 years, mm. doing uh, thousands of weddings. Uh, Originally, uh, weddings, when you were 
got married, you went to a, a studio, and they took a few pictures of you and your wife in the studio. I said, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do candid photography at the wedding, candid photography at the reception, get cover the whole thing and put it in the book. So I started in my town, I started candid photography and did that, did thousands of weddings, did aerial photography, did uh, portraits, did commercial work, did everything and enjoyed doing it. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, I decided, uh, let's see, it was, uh, it was the end of uh, about, well, I came out to uh, Boise, Idaho <coughs> to attend my uh, granddaughter's wedding. Uh, and uh, I was there, uh, I, in the afternoon that I went, uh, got here, well, next day I went shopping my son-in-law. And uh, he said, Claire, how about playing golf this afternoon? And I said, yeah, sounds good to me. Bob. <clears throat> so we went shopping in the afternoon, and uh, but I do. I said, "Go! I don't feel well. I, something wrong. <clears throat> I'll take a nap." <clears throat> so at three o'clock in the afternoon, I said, uh, "Bob, let's go to the hospital. Something's wrong." So six o'clock that day, I had hernia surgery. Hmm. Uh, so uh, got through that just fine. <clears throat> a couple of days later, I woke up. I had a stroke during the night. I couldn't move my right leg, my right arm. And uh, so uh, that was, uh, at that time then, uh, we decided, my wife and I, we had been living in Sheboygan, decided to stay and uh, live in Boise, Idaho. And that's why I'm here now, mm. because uh, uh, we uh, had a nice home, a three-room three apartment in Boise at the uh, plantation place. And uh, my wife died a year later, but I decided to stay right there. For some reason, uh, my oldest daughter, who you met here, she and her husband, uh, he, had, he was with uh, Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, and uh, he was working in Sheboygan, or in Milwaukee rather, for that company. They offered him a job in Boise, Idaho to be the head of, uh, oh, maybe 30 or 40 insurance agents. So. They moved out here about 35 years ago. So we came out, my wife and I, for their daughter's wedding. That's where I had the stroke. And then we decided to stay here. A year later, my wife died. But I decided to stay right here. And uh, then Peggy Denza that was here, she came out. She wanted to change. And she came out about 25 years ago. And then uh, the one other daughter, my youngest daughter, Lisa, came out about 10 years later, and she's here. So I have three daughters here. The rest of my family, the one is in, uh, uh, well, there's some in Sheboygan yet. Uh, there's one in, uh, out on the West Coast, and then there's one in, uh, I can't think of the name again, out of the town. But, uh, that's why I'm here, and that's the story. That's it. <laughs> well, we got it. <laughs> All right. Can we revisit one thing, though? Yes. Is that okay? Well, we want to know how you received your silver star. You have your silver star there on your, you know, yes. your pocket there. And you so know, I, I'm sorry, but I just cannot remember the exact detail about what all what happened. I just. Uh, I told you about the the wound, but the Silver Star was just for exemplary service, good leadership, 
uh, the time that I was in there, there wasn't that any particular one item. It was uh, the, just the to my total leadership ability. I think there's another thing I think they put in there under the definition of a of a silver star is gallant bravery as well. Right. So um, obviously you did something above the call of duty. So well, I, apparently I did. In fact, I'm sorry, but I just can't give you any detail on okay. it. And just I remember exactly That's what it was all about. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, one of the things that we want to know is about this photo right here. You're you're here on the end. Yes. Why are you all assembled there? Well, uh, those are all people from my uh, regiment, and they were all given being there to give uh, receive uh, either purple hearts or or uh, silver star or bronze medal. Okay. Yeah. They were all getting medals of some sort. Do you know where in Germany this was? No, I'm not sure where it was. Okay. Couldn't tell you. Right. Yeah. Do you remember about what month or year it was that you received uh, well, that? Well, it should have been, uh, it should have been, uh, let's see, 1944. It was during the war. Uh, I don't think it was after the war. Still during the war. 1944 sometime. Okay. Yeah. All right, baby. Mr. Kilton, um, we wanted you to comment on, on this um, yes, well, picture and stuff and what it was. Let me just, can I say this for a second? No, say that. Okay, well, when I became an officer, that was given to me. Okay. Uh, my picture was taken, and that uh, is my insignia and information that every officer had. Yeah. So it was presented to me, the picture was taken, and that's the first picture I had taken uh, with my bar. And it says uh, there's a date on there, June 5th, 1943. Yes, right. Uh, and your thumbprints are on it. Right. So this is the, basically all the information. Did you always carry this on you I as well? I carried that with me whenever I was in my wallet as an officer. Yes. yes. Even actually d during the war, oh, yeah. during combat and battles. Right. That was really. That was in my pocket all the while. And you were, uh, if you don't mind me saying, you were five nine and one hundred and fifty five pounds. Yes. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm now about five eight now and weigh uh, one hundred and sixty. <laughs> well, and then I wanted to comment also that this is an original. Class A uniform yes, that Mr. Right. Kilton is wearing as well. So, right. and you're still wearing it great, and you're a handsome soldier. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, in closing, I, I just want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If um, you were to sum up maybe your life or a life lesson, something that you could communicate back to maybe great grandkids that might watch this, or yes. or other people that, uh, especially this generation currently right yeah. now. What message would that be? Would you like to share with them in a sentence or two? What would that What would that be? Uh, I think I should say that uh, my generation uh, was special in that uh, we uh, fought World War Two. I was. Uh, uh, 22, 23, 24 years old. Um, most of the army were people of that age in that time, of 20 years to 30 years old. Uh, and so, well, we, uh, strangely enough, we said we claimed that was our war. Mm. Yeah, and in many ways it was. Uh, of course, we went, uh, to was the Great Depression, uh, and uh, that was a tough time, uh, but uh, we got through that okay, and uh, I, I was very happy to be alive and working and living in that area, in that time. Uh, it was a great time to be alive and work and uh, be an American. Thank you. That's it. Well, sir, we want to thank you so much for your story, but also for your service to our country. Thank you. And uh, we want to just say thank right. you very much. Right. Okay. Mr. Kilden, we wanted you just to comment on this lovely portrait of you and your wife. Well, surely. Uh, 
uh, the day that uh, we were married, well, I, I sent a, a, a card, a cable rather, telegram to my wife on the day I graduated at Fort Payne, Georgia, uh, which was uh, March 30th, and I wrote uh, said the cable saying, honey, we can get married. I'm a second lieutenant making uh, $200 a month, and uh, we can afford to get married. I'll be home in a few days, uh, so start proceedings for the wedding. Uh, so on April 5th, which was five days after that picture was, uh, after five days after I graduated, on April 5th we were married okay. in Chibori, Wisconsin. And, uh, and then that day we went to Chicago on a train and then down to Camp Swift. Yes. Now did you know your wife while you were in high school? I mean, were you high yes. school sweethearts? Yes, actually, uh, I was a senior in high school and she was a freshman. Uh, I met her in church. We were members of the youth group, Comrades of the Way. Uh, we met and uh, we would go to church on Sunday evening and have a meeting and then uh, I would take, take her home. And uh, of course, we, uh, it was five years later that we were married, but uh, that's how it all started in the Shibuya First Congregational Church, Shibuya Wisconsin. Sir, we wanted you to also comment about this lovely Christmas card, obviously, that well, you sent. Thank you, and I, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I, I've i forgotten about it. It has a 30th Division insignia on the inside. Is a card that I uh, sent uh, from Europe. Uh, telling my wife I was still, uh, still alive and kicking, and uh, I don't know if that was after the war or during the war. There's no date on it, is there? Well, it, it says for Victory Home, Germany, Belgium, Holland, France, and England. It must have been so after the war, uh, but uh, I'm very, uh, very surprised about it and happy to see that you sent. I'm sure that she was happy to get it. Well, and it's in great shape as well. I'm gonna see if there's a date on here, really quick, and there's not a date on there. So. Um, I don't know.